Hey there, fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and today I'm going to be talking about trees. A big tree tutorial. One I haven't done in a very, very long time, but this, this is the ultimate one. The ultimate big tree tutorial for this channel. Comprehensive, hands down, everything that I know and can pass on, you're going to know after watching this. Stick around. So I was looking through some of my old channel videos uh, the other day, and I was kind of thinking, I'm like, when's the last time I actually had a tree tutorial? Because I can't really remember. So I looked, I'm like, well, I had a couple of quick tips two years ago. I had a palm tree tutorial three years ago. And then the last time I did sort of a big comprehensive tree tutorial like this was seven years ago. And it's been nine years since I uploaded my first tree tutorial. So I'm like, you know what? I've learned a lot more since then, and my process has changed a lot more since then, and I have a lot more tips. So I was like, you know what, let's, let's redo this. Let's cover just about everything, if not everything, and just do it all over again. Now this video, as you can probably already tell, is long. Uh, just between the timestamp, uh, as well as uh, I've listed time codes in the description box below, so if you want to, at this point, skip ahead to just the painting stuff, just go ahead and click below or tap below, because I guess a lot of people watch on phones and tablets now. Uh, but honestly, if you're watching this, please watch on a bigger screen. It's probably going to make things uh, easier for you. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and tackle trees and acrylics. Uh, lots of different techniques, probably like 10 plus-ish, depending on how far down the rabbit hole we go, uh, with different uh, tips and tricks. So I'm going to quit ranting. Let's get to our supplies, talk about what we're going to be using for this tutorial and uh, just go from there, I suppose. Okay, so out here in front of me, I have a piece of uh, canvas, kind of a scrap piece I had sitting around. I triple primed it and sanded it down so it's nice and smooth and stapled it to a, well, actually stapled it to it first, a piece of uh, wood to uh, mimic the look and feel of a canvas board. Uh, preferably a relatively smooth canvas board. Not I'm specifying that it has to be smooth, but uh, because we're doing a lot of detail work in a lot smaller area, I needed uh, a little bit more, or uh, rather a little less texture to work with, but it didn't totally smooth it out. There is still some canvas texture underneath, which is going to be very important for a handful of the techniques we'll be doing, doing today. So brushes for today, uh, primarily we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of round brushes. I uh, have one softer and one stiffer. The softer one has a shorter handle. Uh, that's just a personal preference. I find I have a little more control with the handle shorter, especially for, again, smaller areas of detail. Uh, the uh, other brush, which is vitally important for uh, pretty much all of my tree techniques. So going forward, if you do not have one of these, go out and get one as soon as humanly possible. Now this is called a liner brush. Uh, it's also occasionally referred to as a rigger or a script. Uh, you'll see these so uh, sometimes with the acrylics, uh, but a lot of times more with watercolor brushes at your local store. It uh, doesn't matter, you can use them uh, both for acrylics, uh, provided you don't use them both for water and color and acrylics in case you have dried paint in the bristles or anything like that. But you're looking for uh, again thin amount of bristles, long out of the ferrule. This is going to basically act as more or less a pen for us. It's going to be just a pen that we just have to keep re-dipping and adding paint to. But it's going to uh, really give you, and what you'll see, a lot more control and a lot more uh, finer areas for detail that really makes uh, trees a little bit easier. And what they're doing a large scale, if you're doing a really large scale, then you go for the round brush. But uh, generally, generally speaking, anything, say, smaller than about a three-foot square, uh, you're probably going to be using the liner brush for. Now, this brush is vitally, vitally important. Now, a little bit later, we're going to start talking about foliage. We're going to do a lot of basic tree shapes and, and roots and branches first. When we get, do get into the uh, branch phase, I'm going to grab a flat uh, filbert, which is kind of like a flat, but it has this rounded top on as well as a fan brush. And I also want to specify for the fan brush that the fan brush has to have stiff bristles. And these techniques I'll be demoing today do not work, or at least don't work super effectively, uh, if the bristles are soft. Uh, so make sure you get nice stiff bristles. This brush is pretty worn out, but uh, still works just the same. Uh, we're going to be mixing also a good amount of paint today, uh, specifically uh, probably a good number of colors as well. Uh, as always, I will shout those out uh, as I start laying out the palette, you can see that over on the right-hand side, lower right-hand corner of your screen, I have a, a, the palette cam uh, up on the, the side there. And for that, we are going to need a uh, palette knife or painting knife. 
Uh, very, very important uh, when you start mixing larger batch batches of paint. Uh, not just to do everything with brush work, but to also uh, grab a knife so you can actually get a nice bunch of paint uh, up, glopping up together. So, not really important to have a knife with you as well. Uh, also to the palette cam, you'll see my water bucket. Uh, I'll be dipping to that frequently. Um, and now I guess we have to figure out what colors we're going to be using. Uh, when I do trays, I actually use a lot of colors, but I'm going to try and keep my set as minimal as I possibly can, uh, just to make things easier on you. I, I like these uh, tips, these tutorials to be uh, more beginner focused, but if you've been painting for a long time, these should still uh, be uh, good for you as well. So to start things off, we're going to want to mix up a brown. Now I actually have a separate tutorial on mixing browns using uh, each of the two uh, or each of the three pairs of complements, uh, complementary colors, uh, red and green, blue and orange, and yellow and uh, purple or violet. Uh, my particular uh, go-to green, or green, yeah, brown for uh, tree work is usually a red-green uh, brown, sometimes with a little bit of yellow mixed in. So I'm starting with some cadmium red. Uh, it's generally my, my go-to for a red. Um, and then for my green, I actually have some of this uh, Liquitex soft body. I don't put it to my heavy bodies. Uh, and I'm using the phthalo green uh, blue shade for this. Now the reason why I'm chick, uh, pick, uh, ugh, picking that one uh, in particular is because it has a good pairing to the cadmium red. And it's going to mix up a brown uh, fairly easily. Uh, provided I didn't use too much green, which I might have. Mm, that's not bad. That's actually a little more red leading than I thought it would be, but that isn't too bad at all. Got to be careful with both cadmiums and, and thalos since they do both tend to have nice strong tint strength to them. And that looks pretty good. So, yeah, you will find that I do like to have a slightly more red leaning green or brown, still messing that up. I'll put a little extra of that on there for the time being. I'm also going to be grabbing a little bit of sap green. Now this is strictly a preference for me, it's just going to make my mixing a little bit easier down the road, uh, specifically when we start doing foliage. Uh, but you can just mix a, a yellow into the phthalo green, that add uh, usually some brown into that to kind of tone that down a little bit. But I just want to make things a little easier on myself uh, going forward. I'm also going to grab a, a blue. Now for me that's going to be Prussian blue. Uh, you can kind of use whatever blue you want to. This is going to be mostly to uh, cool off some of our, our colors and, use it, and we're going to use it to uh, make some shadows as well. Next up we're going to need a yellow. Uh, my go-to yellow uh, for pretty much everything uh, foliage, tree, or natural uh, Usage is going to be some cad yellow medium pure. Okay, we're going to use two more colors. And that's going to be, uh, this one is titanium buff. You can also uh, get uh, unbleached titanium. It's the same color, at least relatively speaking. I like this because it's a nice off-white. If you are looking for a uh, sort of a substitute to this, if you don't have uh, this color on hand, and most people don't, uh, because a lot of you guys, I imagine, are working from basic color sets. Uh, what works is some of your brown, some of your yellow, and some titanium white. You're looking for just for something that isn't a pure bright white. You want something a little bit uh, toned down, a little bit different. And the last color I'm going to grab, which is, uh, I, I feel it's just a convenience color, a little bit of a short cut color, and that's some yellow ochre. I actually have some of the uh, golden open for my yellow ochre, uh, just because I don't have any of the other stuff on my palette anymore. I don't use it a ton. Uh, but I do find when, when I'm doing trees, uh, it tends to be a nice little extra color to add in, uh, specifically when I'm doing uh, like tree bark and things like that, and we will get to that uh, going forward. Now if I do grab any other colors, I will certainly shout them out. I get a feeling like I probably will at some point. Uh, again, I paint the trees with a lot of different colors uh, in order to really kind of push uh, a lot more life and a lot more vibrance into uh, all of those individual colors. And actually now that I am thinking about it, I do need a little bit of titanium white. Uh, I have a, I have some bark that I want to do at some point. I won't need a lot, just a little bit. So, calling out again, that's a mix of uh, 
cadmium red and phthalo green. Uh, we're going to be using a little sap green for foliage, but again, you don't have to use this, and I will show you that mix uh, with the yellow and the brown things to get to this uh, when we get a little bit further down the road. Uh, you want some kind of a blue. I'm using Prussian. A uh, little bit of yellow ochre uh, and a white. And uh, personal preference for me is the titanium buff. Oh, and cad yellow medium. I don't know if I said that already or not. At least not the second time. Okay, so to start things off, uh, I'm actually going to grab a smaller water vessel, and you'll see that right here, uh, because I'm going to be grabbing my liner brush. I'm actually going to be using the liner brush for the whole first part of this um, tutorial. Also, I will note with the, my canvas, I used a piece of scrap canvas, so there's actually some uh, dried paint under here that I had to smooth out. Uh, but this whole section down here is sort of our last big hurrah, which is going to combine 90% of the techniques we do all over here. Uh, so first things first, we want uh, to get a base layer down. So I'm just wetting my brush to start, and I need to thin out the paint that I have, because the paint needs to flow. Now water control, specifically with acrylics, is one of the hardest things to master, and it's going to be different for everybody. So if you see me adding you know, certain amounts of water, certain uh, more or less, whatever, and you try to do it the exact same way with the exact same amount of water, it may not work. You might have a different working environment, uh, humidity uh, uh, in the air, as, as well as um, in your uh, painting environment, so you know, house, garage, wherever you happen to be, it's going to be shift, it's going to be different. Uh, light uh, also affects drying time whether that be natural or artificial light, uh, as well as uh, general temperature uh, makes a big difference as well. Uh, now I've you know, been thinning with water, which a lot of people tell you not to do, but it's, it's absolute crap. I also have another video on that, um, but I'll save that for the future. Really I'm just thinning down the paint to be sort of a, similar to a liquid uh, or a fluid paint, but uh, since I work in heavy body, I have to get it down to that thinner consistency. And you, the reason why you want, or viscosity rather, the reason why you want a thinner viscosity at this point is so the paint flows. Now when you're using a liner brush, uh, a lot of people might be tended, uh, tend to want to push too hard. Kind of keep a really light hand with this, and you, and you will see me kind of easing my tension on my hand a little bit more, or less, or like, less tension here, more tension later. Um, and it's really just to kind of keep uh, that flow and that freedom uh, going. So the first uh, sort of couple of trees we're going to do are just sort of basic tree shapes. Um, I think about sort of like maple, oaks, um, I mean, poplar I think is a, is a pine tree and we're going to get to that later. But just things, you know, big branchy uh, deciduous trees. Like, wait, yeah, deciduous trees. I had to think about that for a second. I'm like... Conifer? No. Conifer means cone. So anything that like loses its leaves, for example. Trees, shrubs, things you might see in uh, the general northern hemisphere. Um, so what I like to do with the liner brush is to pull with it. I find I have a lot more control with that. When you push, you, you get more weird shapes, and that can be good, but sometimes isn't. So, uh, ah, okay. Already screwing up. Sorry, it's early. Um, so we'll start at the top and just pull down with it. And as I'm pulling down, I'm twisting with the brush. And that's to spread the paint out uh, into the bristles more and make sure that the bristles stay uh, uh, pointed. As you work with the liner brush, it will actually kind of spread out and you get that variation where you, uh, you can't even see that. You get this sort of variation if you don't twist, and you, then it just trails off, which is not what you want uh, for a good branch. Because if it trails off too early, then you've got to go over it. And then if you have to go over it, you have a higher chance of just thickening the branch further and further and further uh, to where you can't fix it anymore, and now you've just made a mess. So I'm a big fan of sort of the one-stroke method. And as I do get a little bit further down to the base, whether that be the trunk or closer or, or uh, closer just to the ground. I'm pushing a little bit more and, and getting those bristles pushed out, again, pushed out more. Uh, so a light touch at the top while you're making the branch. Uh, and then as it kind of reaches down, you can push a, just a little harder to get uh, that thicker section. Now at the base, if I'm meeting the ground, I am flaring that base out to give the indication of some roots. 
And don't be afraid. Like, a lot of people just want to go stick, 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 stick all the way down the tree. It's not the case. You've got to think about how trees really kind of are. You know, there's, sometimes there's one there, and then sometimes there isn't another one until way down here. And maybe it comes out way more and it wiggles. Don't be afraid to really kind of wiggle your lines. Perfectly straight lines are boring. Um, and, you know, cross your branches out and around. You know, branches, again, don't just go, kind of go, they, they bend, they curve. Well, it's depending on the tree. But, you now you can have fun with the shapes, and you should. Uh, because trees are generally, generally fun to paint. But the more branches you put in, the more of a pain they can, can become. So and it's okay to pull, too. You can pull up and really get that feathered out edge. Something like that. You know, trees have character to them. They have strange limbs, things that pop out of nowhere. And uh, that's really important to add into your work to be sure that not only the tree is balanced to some degree, to you know, balance your composition out, but also to be sure that the uh, uh, things work, uh, things work well. So I, I love doing this like pair of trees next to each other. It looks really nice. Uh, another great uh, s simple tree method. I think just like a basic maple tree starts at the top, uh, comes down at the bottom. You think like a more or less a teardrop shape, and that's sort of the same deal. You know, you're just grabbing that, pulling it down thicker, wider towards the bottom, and then flaring it out towards the base. And it's important to kind of sketch down your, your trees and kind of get an idea of what shapes you want. Uh, it's always uh, important to sketch out uh, what you're going to be doing. I, it's probably pretty faint for you guys, but I did sketch out all these trees at least a little bit, just to give myself an idea of what I was doing. Um, and this one I'm going to stick with mostly just sort of these back and forth kind of branches. And they're getting larger and wider uh, as we again get towards the base. You don't normally see a big tree trunk kind of branch at the top of the tree. If you do, it probably broke under its own weight. It's important to think about reality and to think about how trees actually look in nature. If you're not sure how trees look in nature, get out, take a walk, uh, go look at some trees and sketch some trees. Uh, Field sketching, uh, foliage, and trees is actually one of the things I really love to do. As much as I actually don't get around to doing it as often as I should. Push one up and around. And if you mess up a little, I have a little extra sitting off to the side. It's okay, you can just turn that into another branch, you know. Just push those out, around and in. One hidden back in here, like so. Always nice to have a little extra character in your tree. About like that. Now, a lot of people will actually end up sort of stopping at this point and just be like, "Okay, good, tree's done." Uh, but you want to forget. Don't forget about your sort of highlight, uh, highlights, highlights and shadows. Just made it one word: highlights. Um, so, for when I'm doing a, a tree highlight, I take whatever I'm using for that base tree color, and I, that's why I tend to mix up a lot of it. And I take a little yellow, and occasionally some ochre, and just a touch of our white, in this case I'm grabbing the buff, just to lighten things up a bit. And I am a little greener here than I'd like, so I'm going to and work a little more red into that. I might need to actually just dab down some red. That's a little better. That just lightening it up. That yellow. Yellow is sort of your your main color for light. Uh, if you want to make anything uh, naturally speaking look brighter, add yellow. Um, if you're gonna, I mean, if you're adding any white to anything, it's gonna oftentimes just sort of dry it out color-wise, make it look either uh, too unrealistic or just too uh, silly and weird. Things look off. Like why does it look off? It's like you're probably mixing white to make your lights rather than yellow. 
So yeah, we're focusing more on yellow than on, on the white. The white's just tinting it up slightly. Uh, and then, of course, when those are dry, figure out where your light source is going to be. That's a good thing to do. So we'll just stick it down right in between them. And so in this case, the tops and anything sort of facing the light is going to be highlighted. Focus on the top, and then you're just kind of tracing down real lightly on one side, not on both sides, just on the one, uh, to give those branches an extra munch, extra little light piece on there. And this will be a very subtle difference. I'm actually going to, just for today, add a little bit more white to this, even maybe even some regular, just, just regular white. Um, because I want this to show up on camera a little bit better. Um, and again, like uh, generally, it's like it's a lot of more dynamic mixing for trees. Uh, you can do it all in big batches, um, and I again, I'm doing some of it in big batches, but it's important to really pl pay attention to your color. And if the color doesn't look great, just you know, mix it up out again. So when you have overlapping branches here, you want to make sure that whatever branch is in front, or whatever you want you want in front, is brighter. So you know, this this one I pull, pulled over top is brighter. The one in the back, if I uh, if I do some shadows for these trees, which I'm probably not going to do, for, at least for these ones, because um, they're so small and sm so thin, uh, I would add blue to that uh, brown initial brown color to. To kick back that, uh, to kick back that color, but because we are just adding a couple little indications of some of these branches, um, a little bit of light on them. That was that was too much paint there. That's okay. We'll just deal with it. Just adds a little extra light to it. And that's sort of the basic idea, the, sort of the basic tree. So if, if you can sort of more or less master that concept um, and sort of those ideas of utilizing and using that liner brush, that's actually really, really valuable and it's going to make everything else you do a hell of a lot easier. Uh, so next up, let's talk about uh, bigger trees, bigger branches. Uh, I'm going to swap for uh, my stiffer round brush and just grab a bit more paint here. And let's build out a bigger tree trunk. Now a lot of people will say, oh you have to work light to dark uh, constantly. Uh, and for certain media, that's absolutely true. You need to work uh, light to dark because you can't make it lighter beyond um, uh, a certain point. So something like pencil, uh, uh, charcoal, uh, you can do some erasing, but you can't really get a lighter value uh, without damaging the paper. What's interesting about acrylics, uh, somewhat oils too, is you can absolutely can go dark first. Uh, and I'm not going absolute to my darkest value. I usually like starting with something of a mid-tone. Um, I love doing it for trees because you really can keep working up those layers and get uh, all kind of different uh, shapes because of it. Okay, I'm actually going to switch back to the liner brush. I could do the face of that with this. but we're just going to go ahead and focus on a, a, just a branch, just a big fat, big fat branch coming out of this tree. About like that. This one kind of comes up here. So we're just amplifying up those, the, the techniques from here on a slightly larger scale. And thinking a bit about where other branches might be coming in and out. Now, from here, uh, it's important to, again, work in layers and to really kind of think about your shapes. Uh, so this is just sort of a middle section of a tree. We're not sticking this one in the ground or anything. We're just focusing on that branch work. Uh, so I'm going to let this dry for a minute because uh, I need to. It's really important. 
uh, to do so. And I'm actually going to go to our next tree segment, which is going to be more uh, bark uh, specific. Now, one thing you'll see, especially if you travel anywhere with a lot of uh, coniferous, uh, coniferous, coniferous, I guess, trees, pine tree, um, you'll see these trees with uh, sort of white bark, uh, and they usually kind of it's usually kind of wrapped around a little more loosely and a little rather than being more of a vertical bark it looks like it's more kind of horizontal um, and I really like these kind of trees they look really neat a lot of times they're like half dead on the bottom uh, so you have, see a lot of that bark showing so I'm actually gonna grab my knife again for a second and I'm gonna mix up a really dark color now in my work personally I use uh, a decent amount of black paint not a lot of people like oh you should not use black paint and black paint thing and that's mostly true um, but I'd like black it's a convenience color but I'm not going to use it today just because I want to keep things relatively uh, easy and show you guys that you can really make good solid dark colors uh, without the need for it so I'm focusing on that uh, bring that blue into again that brown color we started with and that's actually pretty good that's sort of a night like a nice dark teal kind of color and the, again one of the reasons why I uh, went Prussian blue versus a brighter uh, lighter uh, higher not a higher chroma but different chroma blue uh, is because it is again it's darker so it's going to mix in to get me my dark colors a little easier uh, if you're not using the Prussian I highly recommend uh, a phthalo or maybe like an indigo uh, but probably not like a cerulean or a cobalt because it's going to be uh, too bright of a, of a value to really work with um, okay, so back to that round brush. Took me a minute to remember what the hell I was doing. I'm just gonna do this as a, and, and this for, for the the bark, the the lighter, whiter bark. You actually want to start dark. So we're gonna do a layer of dark, and then basically just gonna dry brush over with uh, that lighter color. So I'm just gonna do that with the shape. Remembering to add just enough water to keep your paint flowing, but not enough to make it transparent. If you're somebody that uses uh, like a glazing liquid or an acrylic polymer medium, you can use that too. I just find water is a little bit more convenient and does the exact same thing. And this we're not going to branch out. This is strictly about the bark of that tree. Okay. Now, let's go back to this guy. Now, at this point, I'm going to be mixing up some different variations on this brown. So, in order to do that, I'm going to get myself essentially a couple of little different piles just on the palette here. So, just using the brush here. Probably could be using, probably could be using the other brush, but that's all right. And since I already have the dark, I'm going to be able to use that as well. So, I'm going to grab a good scoop of yellow mix that into there and as I mentioned before it turns it a little bit green based on the mix that I've got so I'm going to add some red back in there and make sure it's sort of just a nice lighter oranger kind of brown yeah I'm actually going to go ahead and grab that knife because I got to mix up a little bit more here so I'm going to grab that and a little ochre again ochre is a convenience color it's just going to brighten this up a little bit more and get it closer to a just a lighter color for myself. We had that one. That one's going to be even redder than that. And those are kind of the two, uh, including the blue, that I usually go with. So they're kind of like more or less based on the primary colors. Uh, but they're all just sort of different brown variants. I could also grab uh, actually some black to do a yellow, uh, a yellow to black uh, sort of greenish brown color. But I'll forego that for today. Uh, so here I'm actually going to thin these down a little bit more. I actually do want them to be a slightly more transparent. Make sure we're still keeping that well mixed though. And from here I'm going to hold back a little bit further on my brush and just start putting thin lines, space them out, don't cover everything. 
but we're just putting down some extra color into that bark. I'm just doing vertical strokes here. Now when you get to the branch, you follow the branch, and where the branch meets the um, where the branch meets the rest of the tree, I'm gonna hold off on. Because I at least for that main one on the left. Because I don't want to completely ruin that joint where that comes together. What we're gonna be doing is adding basically a rounder section and then Highlighting and shadowing as we go, and I just put my hand into that like an idiot. <laughs> completely, completely ripped that paint off. Way to go, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. And we're just going to color to color, thin it out, and we're just going to be adding different, again, those bark variations. Let's not rest my hand on that paint again. That would be dumb. The yellow will show up a little bit more, I imagine, than the red. Especially depending on how, again, what, how much you work up or down the viscosity of the paint. Go to the blue. And be a little more sparing with the blue. I don't want to totally shadow everything. Except right there where I screwed that up. <laughs> I screwed up. Put a branch over there. Nah, another branch. That's all you do. And then recolor everything. Okay. Now that more or less kind of gets us to where we're going. I guess I know you guys probably can't see that super well. So I'm actually gonna go one shade even lighter than that. Grab a whole bunch of my uh, Titan buff here. So this actually the bark actually tends to show up. And the more, more of these sort of individual layers you build up, the more things will start to show. Yeah, it's actually too bright, but that's all right. Just uh, pull some of that paint off of the brush there. And just work with that. Work with what's on there. Just adding those little tiny, little tiny variations in the bark. Now once you're kind of happy with how the bark looks, and you can kind of go back to detailing out those branches. I'm going to stick with sort of that brighter color, but mix up some of that ochre variant. Because I don't want it to be super bright, but also don't want it to be super dark either. So I'm going to stick with that light source on that uh, left hand side there, and then just kind of the same way we did with the, uh, the other branches, and just add that little bit on the one side. And keep that a little lighter, it seems. I'm also not let, letting these layers dry as much as I would on a regular piece that I might be doing. And then, of course, that lighter side. I'm going to put that line in and kind of blend it out into the rest of the bark. And, of course, a larger scale, I'd be using a bigger brush. But even, uh, even again, even a tree of this size on a on a bigger canvas um, is a lot more uh, conducive. If, even if you're just using a smaller brush, a lot of people just want to use a big brush for everything, and you don't you don't want to do that. You want to really take your time when you're painting. Okay, so this branch, I'm actually gonna a lot of the, more of this is gonna be in the shadow, but I'm actually gonna round this out to where it connects and give a little more light into there. And when you think about branches and how they connect to trees, if, if you're more used to doing figure sketches, you've got to just think about uh, these connection points as joints. 
Uh, so whether that be like an elbow joint, uh, I, I love using the shoulder as an example. Like you move your arm up and down, and the way kind of your shoulder meets your socket, um, uh, and, and where, where it meets the rest of your body, uh, there is a certain flare to it. it. It doesn't just go into your arm or into your torso. It, uh, it, there's, there's a little more bend to it. it it's, it's a little more freeform that way. Uh, so you want to add that little bit of a extra, extra wood in there to the joint or even, even extra muscle if you're doing a, a, a figure, any figure work. Alright, so I'm grabbing that darker color, that blue. And I'm going to shadow in to the far side of the tree. And when you shadow it in, not, well, some people don't like, they either don't like putting shadows or don't push their contrast enough. Um, and when you do that, you lose a bit of depth in the piece quite considerably. And darkening the edge that doesn't have the light, obviously. As well as certain connection points. Anywhere that overlap is, that the light wouldn't be getting to. All just gets pushed around into there. All right, I'm going to do one more sort of really bright highlight on there just to make that pop more. I'm going to go just pure uh, Titan buff here. Again, if you're using a white or the buff or whatever to highlight your branches, uh, use it sparingly, little bits at a time, nothing crazy here. And just slowly build that up. It's okay to take your time. A lot of people don't want to take their time, but you just you got to just really bring some light back into there. At this point, I'm more or less dry brushing with it, using a lot more paint, but pulling, using the, more of the back end, the heel of that brush, and just letting it drag, like so. Yeah, as long as you built up that layer underneath, the, your, th those extreme points, the highlights and the shadows, will bring out and really make, I can't snap right now, really make those trees pop. Um, one thing you actually want to make note of as well, um, if you, especially if we're working more realistic, that edge, that shadow edge, won't be just it won't just go straight to black. You will see a little bit of uh, cast lighting on the far side of that, um, not a ton, but enough to so it just doesn't fade to like a more or less a straight black in, in, in the back side of that. Um, so your your shadow side should not should never just be shadow all the way to the edge. You should have a little cast light lighting around the other side. Okay, so this should be about dry. About I might get a little of that blended in when I start adding the white, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, so I'm actually going to grab a flat brush, but not the one I have sitting out. Um, I have a shorter one here uh, that I'm going to get a little more control with. And so the bark for here, I'm actually going to just go right into the white. I can add a little blue to this, a little or darker color, even a Actually, you know what, I'm going to grab it, just a hint of that ochre mix, just to make it a little more off-white. At this point, we're just dry brushing. Now, I've got a couple different dry brushing tutorials on the channel. One, I talk about waterfalls, and this is probably the most similar to that. Uh, the other one is making a nebula and in space. So I'm just getting a little enough, enough paint to get crisp up the edge of that uh, flat brush. Uh, make sure that's nice and uh, calm, calm-ish, I guess. Uh, again, focusing, my, well, my light source here, so I'm going to work that way. I'm just going to come to this edge, and this is actually a really fun, fast, easy technique compared to this one, or the, or the previous one, rather, just because uh, it's uh, a little bit easier on. So I'm just starting at that edge and pulling, about like that. You may need to add a little bit more or a little bit less paint uh, the more you do something like this. And I'm kind of swooping in. I'm not... Uh, it's not just straight across. I'm, I'm taking the brushes, here, the bristles here, and bending them and pulling them. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of a U shape. And with any kind of dry brushing, it's important to remember that less is more. Um, 
You don't want to overblend here. Uh, just like just that little bit. That's it. That's that's all you need to do with the strokes. Uh, don't go overboard. Uh, now I actually am going to tone down that white a little. Grab some of that blue. And then kind of come in from the other side for that shadow side. Now this is actually going to be really hard for me to do. do. In fact, you know what? I'm turning this. I'm sorry for the odd angle, but I, I have to. Um, so same deal, same sort of swoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. Right about like that. Um, now again, I this is pretty minimal. I actually might add a little bit more white into this, uh, just because I want to get more of that outer bark than the inner bark. So since we did that initial layer, we can just kind of build it up slow. Don't go crazy. And just get it to kind of where you want it to be. And the dry brush at this point, uh, mostly just picking up on the texture of the canvas. Now, if you want less texture of the canvas, again, you can add a little more, a few more layers of paint underneath uh, for that under, under, underlying color. Uh, but for the most part, that's all you really need. And, and then kind of going back into this, I like to add uh, just some extra little spots. Trees like this tend to have uh, spots where branches fell out and things like that. So I'll add little extra dots and uh, bark striations to it, things like that. And, and again, for... A tree like this, normally, I think I would probably actually, actually really want to use black uh, for this. Uh, because if you see those kind of trees around in nature, they actually do have a little bit more and darker colors to them. But did want to show that uh, you can absolutely do it with just uh, a darker blue mix or a darker whatever mix. And here I'm just grabbing uh, the liner brush, uh, horizontal, slight, slight U-y kind of strokes the way I was doing before just to match that out and give a little extra texture into uh, the tree itself. Like so. Pretty simple. Next let's talk a bit about uh, leaning toward those uh, conifer trees a little bit more. The pines, the big giant big ones. Uh, <laughs> So for this, I'm grabbing a fan brush and pretty much nothing else. Uh, this is basically the Bob Ross technique. It's what I picked up. It's what I started doing a long time ago. I'm not even wetting these bristles, actually. I'm going to grab the brown, some of that deep blue color, because I just want it dark. So just grab the whole blue color. I have to make a little bit more of it. but Because right, I just want to darken it, and then I grab just a hint of that green. And thick up. Thickening up, whatever. A lot of paint on the on the bristles. A lot of paint. I don't have enough on there. A lot of paint. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Because you want that nice. You don't want this to spread as much. Now these bristles are very old, so they're going to spread a little. Just because there there aren't enough bristles left on the brush. But I'm really trying to get that as clean of a edge as possible. I do have a. Uh, other fan brush that's newer, but uh, these bristles are far too big for what I'm doing today, so I'm holding off. So, uh, I just have basically a single line here, stick, to kind of give me a, myself the indication of where that is. And I just tap the top to give the indication of the, of the, sort of the tip of that. And then, corner of the brush, very, very edge. Just tap. And then as I work, push a little bit harder, using more and more of the brush. And a little bit of back and forth motion, but not much. Fill out the middle, because sometimes the middle gets off, especially when the brush is older. And then push, 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 push. And pine tree. Those are always so much fun to do. Kind of even it out a little at the top there. Got a little off kilter. Right about like that. 
And whether you go wide or, or, or tall and thin, I'm, not, I'm making this worse, aren't I? I have to make it a little taller, I guess. There we go. About like that. That's pretty easy to do. Now you can take your time a lot more and really kind of push around those shapes. I don't. I feel like that's a waste of time. So don't do it. Okay. Next layer, although I do have to wait till that dries, so I'm going to wait a minute. I can go on to our other sort of pine tree example. I think that's sort of same darkish color uh, for these uh, tree trunks. These ones, so I guess, will just be farther away. <laughs> There's not enough paint in there, so, so I'm starting to get that drag. Or it's not thin enough, rather. Got to remember to pull and twist. That's very easy to forget about. I, like, you just saw it. I forgot to do it right there, so I have to move it over a little. Can't necessarily trace the lines I put down. Pull and twist. And trees like this are. I remember seeing a lot of trees like this um, in Colorado and Wyoming when I was traveling out there when I was a kid. And uh, when you get those trees, uh, a lot of times you have uh, fires and it, it kind of burns the bottom of the branches or the branches just die and fall off. And all you get for the foliage and everything else on top is right, you get the branches on top. I'm just going to toss these in some, as some indications for myself. Um, but all you get them, uh, all you get is that that those leafiness at the very very top. And I'm not even gonna get the fan brush for this. You, if you're on a so, small enough scale, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we start doing the other foliage uh, down here. Uh, but you can actually use a, a flat brush the same way you can use a fan brush. You just got to be a little bit more careful with it in terms of how much you're spreading and how things look. So for something like this, I'm actually gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, tip the top of it and then just corner the brush back and forth little bits at the top and spreading it out a little bit more doing more left to right um, not as much in the way of um, more of a full branch it's kind of just a partial and then just to the top, maybe a couple kind of in the middle there. A lot of times with the flat brush though, you're getting more of this blocky shape, which is why it's harder to use a flat brush as a fan brush. Uh, but again, it takes practice, you get a little bit in. A lot of times you're just tapping, just tapping real straight up and down with those, the, the tips of the, the bristles, just to keep, make, make, and keep and to make sure that uh, you're not getting, uh, again, that sort of blocky blobby shape, you want it to be thin and fine. And you also can do this with a uh, the liner brush and really just kind of very carefully uh, paint out those shapes. But that is uh, a level of patience I do not have. So I will save that I believe for another day. Right about like that you've got yourself I'm just going to smooth out a little base land here. Uh, some basic shapes for, for those trees. Now, so after you get the dark layer, then you want to start building up uh, uh, sort of lighter foliage colors. And actually, you know what? I want to drop myself a new light source indicator over here. Uh, just because it's going to make my life a little easier not to have to think back to this one. So as I mentioned before, uh, you can totally make a good foliage green with the phthalo green. That and some yellow. Uh, the two together make what I kind of refer to as um, storybook green. It's just too bright, it's too highly chromatic, and I like to be able to tone it down a little more. So I will add, uh, at least what I did back in the day, was add some yellow uh, ochre to pull that down, and then occasionally it's just some red to kind of just kick it back a notch. Uh, you don't want it to be super, super bright. Uh, that was actually too much, that was way too much red. Uh, actually, well, maybe not. That's not bad. But I find that um, the phthalo greens generally it makes that too high chromatic of a green. Uh, so for that reason, that's why I grabbed the sap green. I'm actually just going to mix this right in with all this other stuff. Just because I find that it's a slightly more tame green.
green than the phthalo and makes something a little bit more, again, natural looking. Um, so a little, I would say it almost makes a little bit more of a muted color too. So load some of that up and uh, more or less just tracing that shape, but again, being sparing because our light's going to be on the one side, our shadows are not. Um, so just kind of follow your shape. Right, way more paint on the corner of that brush. And kind of dab what you would imagine sort of the tops edges of the branches. And focusing way more on the right side since that's where the light's coming from. And then taking that same color, actually I want to divide some of that out because I don't want to, I don't want to lose it for these. But taking that same color, brighten it, brightening up, brightening up, brightening up. Remember, more yellow is good, white not so much. Brighten everything up. And I will actually add just a hint of that. A couple little, okay, that's way too much. That's way, way too much. On the one edge of my brush, this is sort of a what I call the brush gradient technique. Uh, you're putting a lot more uh, brightness on the one edge, the edge you're going to be painting with, and everything just kind of fades out. You can actually do a trees in like a single stroke this way. Um, if you want to be fancy. And then, again, highlights, always way more sparing than your midtones. Don't go crazy. And just tap it in. About like that. And that kind of Bob Ross-esque tree, that looks good at pretty much every time. It's really hard to screw that up. Anyone can do that technique super, super easy. Uh, so grabbing, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the liner brush for this to show you, to show you that longer sort of technique with the, uh, the branches here. And I'm just kind of tapping with the brush going back and forth a little bit. And with, uh, with uh, this technique in particular for more uh, conifer trees, you get con coniferous. That's what it is. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. As soon as you stop thinking about it, it always comes to you. Um, because you use that dark layer first, you don't really have to come back in and reshadow it, which is why I think it's a fun, effective way, especially for a... Uh, a more beginner focused technique. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Then um, you know, bright, brighter yellows, uh, sparing with the white for those nice bright upper level highlights, and everything like that. Now I could kind of come back in here and add a little extra highlight to the uh, the tree trunks here, but I think we're uh, taking a enough of our time on that. Uh, for the time being. Okay, next up, palm trees. Now I do have uh, sort of a part one, part two for these that are fairly extensive already. So I'm gonna sort of jog through these ones a little bit more. Uh, nine, 90% of this though, gonna be painting with the liner brush. Actually, all of it, we're gonna be painting with the liner brush now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so there's different types of palm trees. I like the ones that I remember seeing in Florida when I was a kid, uh, which are the ones with big, leafy palm branches. Not, so, not necessarily the ones with just sort of the, the flatty, flat sort of banana leaf kind of palms. I hate those. They don't look, they don't look as well, uh, especially not in a painting. When I'm thinking about a tropical environment, um, especially in my work, that's not something I do a whole hell of a lot. Um, I, I like to imagine something that has those big leafy palm branches. Uh, so for this, you know, you start with your, your basic stick shape. Uh, a lot of palm trees tend to arc and bend, so you can do ones that look like that. And then I'll start just with four or five uh, sort of just overarching shapes. So big whoop, one, two, three, and all, all of these are coming out of the same point at the top. And we'll go one going this way maybe, four. And these are just sort of like the the, we call it the backbone of the, of the palm tree. One, 
two. And they, they don't even have to be uh, super neat either. Three. I can do a few more here. Uh, we'll go, let's see what looks good. We'll go one there, four, five. And uh, yeah, so that's sort of just where this starts. Now from here, kind of similar to the pine trees, we're going to start dark. And well, same, some of everything else. Start dark, work a little lighter. Just grab a little bit of red into that too. Work with some of this browner color. And at this point, I'm grabbing, uh, sort of intersecting this, and then just kind of pulling and flaring it out. So you think a taper, so press and then lift. Uh, kind of like a quick, just little quick little strokes. I'll sort of pick that top, I kind of call that, that spine the top edge. And I'll just grab it and pull, 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 pull. And then you do, depending on which sort of way you want the branches facing, I like to sometimes do it to the other side too. And then just grab that middle and just pull, 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 pull. And it just creates this little bit of a flare effect for the whole branch. Now when it comes to where the joint is, I tend to keep the branches a little bit tighter, a little closer together. Those little flare points and then further out, further into that edge we go, we go just a little bit further, a little bit further with it. Up, top, pull, 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 pull. And I, what I like about this technique is uh, you can practice with this with just a pencil. Uh, you don't need paint to practice this because this is focuses really on the liner brush and sort of that uh, basic technique with uh, utilizing the liner brush more or less as a pen. Um, you can practice this, or, or a pencil or whatever, uh, you can practice this just with dry media and uh, it's super effective and it translates very well uh, directly into paint. Uh, so if you're struggling on getting these shapes right, uh, just sketch with a pencil. Uh, and just, again, do the same thing. Stick, stick, line, and then just flare out, flare out, flare out, flare out. Um, it really kind of gives you an, uh, a way to practice um, without wasting paint. And uh, still looks good when you actually bring that technique to canvas. Uh, before I started uh, painting these palms like this, I started. I was just doing it in my sketchbook with a pen. And I was like, well, heck, I can do this with a liner brush super easily. And so I did. And it became uh, uh, my essential palm tree technique, really. And you can pull with it. Uh, right here I am doing that um, just for some extra variations on those branch types. Big, leafy palm branches. About like that, and I did keep the paint a little bit uh, thicker. Not, I didn't thin it out quite as much for that, which I'm hopefully you guys kind of noticed. Um, and then again, this is same deal as before. We, we got that in, uh, just like the uh, the pine trees. Grab your your next uh, brighter value. In this case, for this lighter yellow green, I'm going to thin this a little bit uh, since I'm not letting that initial layer dry yet, and I do want things to show up a little bit more. And then again, remember your light source and just lighten it up. Actually, this, yeah, I gotta thin this out a little more. When you don't let your layers dry, you gotta use a little, thin, little thinner paint to get things to show up on camera. <laughs> the more you know. Art tips and video tips today. Doing a little bit of pulling here, which is less than ideal, but just letting it push up and around. And of course, you know, the bigger scale you get, um, actually I would probably stick with the liner brush even, even on a large scale piece. But uh, because I'm working small scale here, level of detail that I need to add with the, these up, upper highlight layers are, isn't quite as much. I can get away with just a couple of quick strokes and 
bring a little more light into that. Um, and of course, you can you don't have to go all the way to the super dark color. You can start with just like a deep green and build that up and build that up and lighter and lighter and lighter, depending on the light source in your piece. Uh, so it's important to note that you don't necessarily have to go straight into uh, straight into that super dark color. But uh, for me, I like high contrast stuff. So and uh, nice, bright, vibrant colors. I think it just makes everything pop out a little easier. Again, especially for the demo. <laughs> uh, for any kind of painting, you can always adapt and change your colors uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so I, a lot of ways, actually don't even like shouting out my colors just because it's like, use whatever colors you want. This could be a blue palm tree or a purple one. Technique's still exactly the same. Play with your play with your values, really. Yeah, enough. About like that. A couple of palm trees. Uh, grabbing a sort of our lighter color here. A little bit of buff. And we'll just toss a little light onto those tree trunks. Now one thing I actually will do if I am painting a larger scale palm tree is I'll actually use this technique for the bark. Only I'll use uh, like a, a light brown like the, like the yellow ochre and just pull and do that arc technique uh, to get more of those uh, sort of sections the way palm trees kind of have. Um, on a scale like this it's a little harder to do um, but you absolutely can just kind of take this and, and just kind of tap and get, get those strokes going to the side like that. Uh, but again, this small, sorry, getting used to the new mic, I keep tapping it. Um, this small uh, of a area, you don't really need to, you can just grab the liner and it uh, works just fine. Adding those couple of little sections in. Okay, so now we're, that we're sort of already leaning towards doing foliage, let's talk about different types of foliage techniques. I've of course already done two with the fan brush as well as the liner individually, uh, specifically for uh, those very specific types of trees, but if you're again doing more trees like this, uh, I want to kind of give you guys a general idea of how that looks. I'm actually going to swap for my softer round, finally. Only took, only took the uh, half the tutorial to do. And I'm just going to real quick drop in some basic tree trunk uh, shapes. Now, uh, one thing that I will say that helps immensely uh, especially if you're not used to doing uh, uh, trees like that are that you're not painting this way and then putting foliage on top of, which I actually recommend a little bit more because it gives you a better indication of where those branches uh, are going to be covered in uh, 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 leaves, really, because um, you never really know until you actually start uh, mapping things out in advance, which I find to be actually extraordinarily valuable in that regard. Uh, but I am going to do that a little bit because I want to be sure that um, where I'm establishing branches and where I'm putting foliage actually makes sense logically with the tree. Now I'm not going to be as uh, distinct with my, uh, my paint. Uh, I'm letting things drag a little bit more the way I didn't want to do here because I know in advance I'm just going to be covering that up. Uh, now that said, uh, it is important uh, in a lot of ways to know exactly, again, where you want those uh, branches to go. It should make sense logically. This is a little bit of a mess, but I'll deal with that when we uh, come to it. Uh, and so if you're going to be making a certain shape uh, for your tree and you really want to know uh, specifically where uh, your branches are, if you want to put foliage on them more accurately. But these, uh, at this point, I'm just dropping these in to uh, give myself a general idea. Because uh, we're going to be talking more just about the different types and textures of uh, foliage you can achieve with different brushes. Not necessarily, in this instance, making them uh, the most realistic trees in the world. At least in terms of the shapes of the, uh, the trunks and the trees themselves. But that's generally a nice base, a nice place to start with. Um, and things like that. So first, since we've been using a round brush for you know, a little while here, 
you can absolutely use a round brush to build up your foliage. Now, actually, you like tend to, tend to end up using a bigger round brush. Why don't we go ahead and stick with the uh, one I'm currently using? And again, with uh, everything else I do, I kind of, again, start with the mid-tone and work either lighter or darker, respectively, uh, kind of as I work. Uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of the blue, a little bit of that phthalo green, mix that together. Make myself a dark that is still a green dark. Phthalo blue, I'm not Phthalo green, Prussian blue. Already forgotten what colors I mean. So this is a nice sort of a deep color. I'm actually going to start on this one. I'm going to go backwards with this. And I'm just taking the tip of the brush, kind of keeping it hot, uh, kind of highly angled, and just tapping with it. And building that shape out. And a lot of people tend to forget that you don't want to put your leaves or your things wherever the branches aren't. People want to just keep going out, 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 out. It's like, no, no, no. There wouldn't be a branch there. Like I said before, like if you put big branches stretching way out on the top, they're going to break. They're going to fall off. Especially with the weight of uh, additional uh, leaves on them uh, different times a year. So again, if you're uh, think doing this doesn't look quite right, uh, branch it like make this tree, and then put uh, leaves on it. Even if you're paint it all and cover it up anyway, um, you wouldn't have to highlight and shadow the branches, but you place them in there, so you so you know exactly where you are putting uh, your your leaves. So yeah, we're just just tap 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 tap, not going crazy with it, just. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. About like that. And I do, again, same as before, move to the, the brighter color. I'm going to put, I think, all my light sources for these on this left side one. And ideally, again, I'd be letting these dry uh, a little bit more in between these layers. And then, again, as you the lighter you go, it's, uh, it's more sparing. You're not putting this, this highlight all the way across the tree unless that's how you're lighting your tree. Uh, but for me, I like strong lighting usually on one side or the other. Uh, I like to be able to really show that distinct difference in tonal value. Looking towards a lot brighter of a yellow now. And not as much water here. This is pretty much strictly, strictly just thick, heavy paint here. Tap, tap, tap. Come on, yellow. There we go. And the round brush gives you a nice sort of bushy shape in that regard. Um, nothing uh, insane, but. A fairly nice basic tree kind of shape. If you want like a nice, a nice bushy maple, this is this is going to get you there um, for sure. And we're going to just get a little bit of blue left over on the brush, and then there's the back end, back end shadows in there, like so. And then one thing you can do, you don't necessarily have to, but uh, sometimes you have branches that stick out or stick in between where some of these uh, areas are, or you know things like that. You can see these little support branches sticking out. Uh, nice uh, a way to add a little extra depth is just to put an extra support branch on top or underneath uh, some of these uh, tree segments. Uh, gives a little bit more extra extra idea that you actually did know what you were doing and where you were placing those things. Sometimes some stick out and up and through. Maybe have like a big dead one sticking out of there. You know. Don't be afraid to really kind of get creative with your trees. Uh, so that's again basic round brush uh, for that. Then uh, if you want to go maybe a slightly different shapes, uh, highly recommend uh, a flat brush for this. Uh, again, just go in there and just mix my two greens here. Make it easier on myself. 
And a lot of times if I'm doing a flat brush, I'm using the corner. I'm not doing that straight up and down, just kind of corner tapping with it. And it creates a little bit of an interesting angle uh, effect. It's going to be kind of similar to the... Let's get a little darker in there. Cover some of that up. Uh, similar to the round brush, but not quite as distinct. Uh, the, the can kind of rotate it out and use more of the back of the brush to get a lot of different kind of shapes. Especially with the uh, flat brush. And I find that it, it just makes it uh, a little bit more interesting, I think, in, a, in the long term. And again, you saw me, I didn't establish every single branch. Uh, and the reason why I personally don't do it that way, at least most of the time, is because I can do it mentally. I've done enough trees in my life that I can do this for this tree without without actually doing it. I can I can look at it and I, I can know what it looks like uh, just in my head um, just because I've done it enough. Uh, so again it's it's a uh, it takes time to build up that takes time to build up that skill set for sure um, but it also comes down to practice. Do it a lot. If you want to paint trees effectively Sketch, sketch them a bunch and really kind of get to know a little bit of water, not a ton. Um, really get to know how trees look in nature and you can better replicate them in your work. And again, I'm not letting these layers dry. I would absolutely do that normally, but because um, I'm getting way more blend, like I'm I'm tapping down. I'm not getting anything. Um, that's why I keep going back for more paint <laughs> uh, because I didn't let my layers dry to get the more complex shapes that I would really want. And then back end shadows. And push that contrast up. So yeah, round brush, um, flat brush, similar shapes, definitely similar shapes. Now the one that I love using, I'm actually going to get a bigger one of these. And that is the filbert. Okay, you're going to see very quickly why I like this brush for foliage. Uh, it, for me, it takes the guesswork out of doing the, the shape. Uh, because of this round edge, it, uh, it's kind of similar to, it's, I would call it like a reverse fan brush in a lot of ways. Um, because you are looking at creating a shape that, actually, you know what, I'm going to make this an autumn tree, because why not? Um, uh, th that shape itself, as soon as you start tapping with it, you get that little arc. Uh, so it really kind of lets you, I go back and forth a little bit with this, get these shapes that look like they are branches without actually painting the branch. Which I find to just be super, super fun. So again, I'm just tapping with the sort of the tip of the brush there and getting all of those shapes um, and that idea of that drooping branches without having to paint those branches. That's why Filbert's, again, one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite brushes for painting foliage. Um, I, would, I would say it's probably even, for me, more fun to paint foliage with the Filbert than it is with the fan. Because the fan, you actually do have to really kind of pay attention more with. In the Filbert, it's just like, can't, again, I can't snap. My fingers are too soft right now. Can't, can't do it. Uh, really quick, easy methods. All right, so I'm grabbing the red I have in here and some yellow. Make a bright orange color. Thinning slightly for flow. 
and thin paint sticks to thick paint, so since we're not letting our layers dry, and I'm going to highlight this whole thing. So our light source from here, um, coming down, and if your sort of light source is coming from the top, the underside of the branches will be the uh, sort of dark sections versus um, the uh, like one side or the other. So as I get to the bottom, I'll use a little less color. Like so. An autumn tree, I can use pretty much whatever color. Make a real mess of the palette now. Some green, some red, some yellow, sure, a little bit of everything. Just tapping away. A little bit of that white. To lighten it up. Wetter. Not even mixing on the palette now. I'm just straight up having fun. <laughs> but yeah, you can do a lot with different types of brushes and uh, pushing foliage in different uh, directions, different ways, and depending on what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Uh, have a look at different uh, brush types, especially if you want to push some different shapes into your trees, uh, for sure. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, the last technique, we are basically going to shove every single one of these techniques together into one giant uh, tree. So for that, getting a whole bunch of our brown, and we're making a big tree on this entire side of the uh, 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 canvas, um, and going to be painting some nice big roots. So I'm just going to start blocking in color here. This I'm treating way more like how I would approach a uh, regular piece for me. So you're going to see stuff that I didn't talk about uh, because, well, I can't give away everything in this tutorial. Uh, I don't like being so super exclusive with my techniques, but at the same time, um, a lot of what I do isn't limited to uh, sort of those simple ideas uh, behind the stuff. It's a it's, it's again a combination. It's a pushing around of those ideas uh, and making uh, new techniques out of them by simply just uh, doing it a lot and uh, just pushing into new areas and new new territories uh, with my work. So I'm, primarily, this is going to be the most like this bark uh, tree branch uh, section, but I'm pushing a lot more color in. It's a lot bigger of an area. And I'm a lot more expressive with my brush since I am working larger and I'm trying to push a lot more color and a lot more uh, technique into uh, this particular last one. Uh, there's a lot more sporadic movement. I'm using more water. I'm using more paint. Um, uh, again, holding here, but also here. A um, lot more arm movements since, again, I'm working larger. More of arm shoulder movements than the finger movements. And I went from primarily uh, sitting for the majority of this uh, tutorial to standing. Because uh, I stand when I work, and I want this last section to be a little bit more comfortable for me. Because uh, the rest of this has been actually not as much comfortable. So, dropping that out, down and in. And you know what? Because I'm painting uh, more like myself now, and not more like a tutorial, I'm getting black. Uh, this is some uh, cold and high flow carbon black, which is going to make the rest of my day a little easier. All right, we're just going to start grabbing color then. That blue, that my palette's really starting to dry out. Oh, we crap! Water all over. Oh well, that one broke. Awesome. Back to the dollar store I go. Uh, <laughs> cheap dollar spray bottles. Yay. That mix not straight out of the. Out of the tube, bottle black, but enough to darken that color, mixing with the blue, things like that. And I'm actually going to push shadows in first. So light this way, that's all I need to know mentally as I start dropping in these areas. Establishing where I want things, I want a big root that comes down here. 
ties up and in. Push it up, over, round. Really just playing at this point. This one there. Up and in. Being, again, way looser here. Swapping for the liner for a second. Get some little other branches popping up in here. That's not a pain on there. It's a little too thin, actually. Yeah. There we go. There's a nice big fat one. Little indications of things going every which way. And back there. <laughs> Lighten that up. Also, you're going to see uh, very quickly, I'm going to be making one hell of a mess on the palette. So anything, I was keeping my colors in nice quadrants. No, we're, we're just a little bit of everything everywhere at this point. Building in some additional color. More ogre in there, why not? Now, at this point, I don't expect you guys to be really following along here, but I am expecting you to, after seeing all of this, if you watched all the way through to this point, um, to see the same techniques being utilized, but just in a little bit uh, faster and more of efficient fashion. Um, I don't expect you guys to paint uh, with this level of uh, veracity, I guess you might say, uh, right out of the gate. So uh, just know that uh, the pace that I'm moving at uh, as well as the uh, confidence that I've got at this point, uh, have come through uh, years and years and years of painting trees. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, uh, the first tree tutorial I, I put up uh, is now nine years old. It came out, I think, in April of 2011. Uh, that is a long time ago. Um, and certainly uh, warrants mentioning, uh, I think, multiple times, just because I am, again, working with a long, long, long history of experience. So when I'm tackling a tutorial or uh, any other piece like this, I am leaning on all of that previous experience uh, for every piece that I do. Uh, so if it's not turning out well, it doesn't look quite right, practice, 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 practice. Do a lot of them. Um, it's like, well, this tree and thing doesn't look quite like the, your tree. It's like, well, how many trees have you made? Six? then it's not going to look the same. Uh, you got to be able to let yourself work. Uh, and uh, again, with a lot of these techniques, sketching is very, very, very important. Uh, the techniques and the skills that you get uh, through basic uh, traditional drawing will absolutely translate uh, to painting uh, because the, the rough hand movements are the same. Um, yeah, you may not be going back and forth for color when you're using a pen or a pencil, uh, but those shapes are exactly the same with a brush as they are with a pen, pencil, or other, even a digital stylus in some respects. Um, and you really have the ability to push the techniques in between uh, the media if you just do it enough. And I hope this tutorial, in a lot of ways, has acted as a jumping off point uh, for you in, uh, in, in trying new techniques and showing you that it, it's not impossible to, to paint well. Uh, with, with any of my uh, tutorials, these techniques aren't super advanced. They aren't uh, something that are, is so unaccessible uh, for most people. It just takes time and practice to build up sort of your own uh, working set of what techniques you feel uh, work well for you, as well as what techniques uh, are, I think, make you a more effective painter. And that's going to be di something different for everybody. I don't expect all of you to get everything, every the same thing out of this tutorial that maybe I'm even intending to. Uh, there might be somebody that takes one nugget of information out of this entire thing. Uh, some of you might take uh, uh, something out of every single technique and adapt that into your work. 
but it's very, very important to remember that uh, if you're not practicing, you're not going to get it. And you can watch a thousand tutorials, but if you're not actually putting in the work, you're not actually doing the projects, then it's not going to do anything for you. Um, so when you work, when you're dark, trying these techniques out for yourself, uh, remember to do them a lot. Uh, you try it once, it doesn't work. You learn from it. You do it again. And eventually, you start picking things up. Um, again, these, for, for me, even for you guys, these are not complicated techniques. And I don't use a lot of complicated techniques in my painting. I use a lot of these simple basic principles. Everything I do a tutorial on is at least to some degree a variation or even a direct um, a direct direct appropriation of techniques I use for every single painting. Uh, so for that reason uh, I really feel like these tutorials that I put out are some of the closest I can give you uh, to bring you up to the level of somebody who has you know, 20 years of painting experience. Um, but doing so hopefully with fairly clear uh, language that I can explain things relatively easily and things turn out not so complicated because painting is not as complicated as a lot of people might try to tell you that it is. Painting should always be fun, easy, not necessarily easy, but it can be challenging. But it should never feel like a chore. And if it starts to feel like a chore, stop. Stop letting it feel like a chore for you. Uh, take a break. Do something else for a while. And then come back when you're ready. Um, make sure you come back uh, fully charged, ready to go, ready to paint. And have fun with it. If it stops being fun, it stops being painting. So, I think that's about a good place I have to stop. Uh, a whole lot of techniques, a whole lot of advice there. Uh, big, crazy... I, I could probably sit and spend another hour just doing this, because I'd more or less create an entire little tree-like landscape at this point. But I'm going to go ahead and hold off, also because this is really wet. And I can't do that much more to it uh, without at least waiting maybe ten minutes here. But I'm going to grab some regular uh, Titan buff and just uh, dry brush with the rest of this for the next minute here. But, as always, uh, if you learned anything in this video, um, be sure to hit that like button, uh, share, uh, comment, subscribe, uh, all that fun stuff. Again, I know this tutorial ran a little long, but again, we covered 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, I don't know if you can actually count this one, <laughs> uh, since I wasn't really talking about what I did. I just started going to town on it. But um, yeah, we're, we're talking uh, at least 10 solid uh, techniques for painting trees uh, between the uh, barks and branches uh, to the foliage itself. I hope you guys uh, really have, have found something in this that you can utilize uh, in your own work. So again, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, follow my work. Uh, on social links in the description box below, inc including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Instagram, in particular, I post a lot of work in progress on. Uh, things that, uh, sketches, uh, pieces that I'm uh, working on that uh, usually are halfway finished, things like that. You can see more of the uh, behind the scenes uh, process. Uh, for my finished work, you can check that out on uh, Facebook DeviantArt as well as my own website uh, to see what the techniques look th like these look like utilized in uh, bigger pieces. And uh, as always, this has been from Center Block Studios, reminding you to keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time.